Okay, excellent. You're here because you've got one of these, a TPL4220, and it's cutting out all the time on the network. And the only way to fix it is to power it off at the wall and switch it back on again. My experience is that I needed to do that every single day. Apart from the constant turning it on and off every day just to get it working again, it's pretty good. I've got three of these in my house and I'm pretty happy with them except for that part of turning it on and off all the time. Anyway, I did figure out a way to improve on that situation and that is to install the previous firmware. Okay, first thing you have gotta do is find out what model you have and it's written on the back. If you look at the sticker on the back, it'll say here version, mine's version four. Okay, so I'm on this website here, TP link, support page, downloads for WPA4220. So I selected version there. Now I don't know if this affects other versions, but I know it affects version four. Leave a comment if you're having this problem with version five or version three, etc. Anyway, scrolling down, when I first got the device, it was pre-installed with version 4, 1903.26. This is the version that keeps switching off at least once a day and I have to physically cycle the power by switching it off and then on again. Okay, I found that if I installed the previous version of the firmware, problem occurs less. But not only that, it fixes itself. So the problem still occurs where the network cuts out and you feel like you have to go to the power switch and switch it off and then back on again. But in the older version it seems to fix itself after about 30 seconds to a minute so it's not completely fixed but it's kind of there so I think the difference between the newer version is that it doesn't detect the problem internally and reset itself whereas the older version does so anyway what I've done on all my TL4220s is installed the older firmware what I did is downloaded there we go and if I open that in there is a bin file that I will need to load into my Wi-Fi extender. Now before you can install it, you'll need to find out what the IP address is of your Wi-Fi extender. So I'm gonna log on to the main router on my network. I just happen to have a TP-Link router on my network. You might have a different product from a different company. If I look at all the wired clients on my network, I know from experience that the TPL4220 that I want to install the firmware on is that IP address. So I can type that IP address in. Your IP address might be different, but anyway, look for something like that, TLWPA4220 in the connected devices configuration page that your router might show. Anyway, so that's the IP address. So I've now typed that IP address into my browser and I'm taken to a login screen. Now, this is the login for the particular one of those on my network that I wanna fix. Default admin username and password is just admin admin. You may have changed that. Okay, system tools, firmware upgrade, I've already got the older firmware here because I've already done it on this device. But anyway, browse that file and see here that it's in a zip. I'm going to have to extract that. So let's just extract that temporarily. Extract. There we go. Now go into that folder and select the bin file. Open. Okay. And then press upgrade. And then after 30 seconds or so, it's quite pointless in my case because I already have the firmware, but I'm just showing it to you anyway. Okay, so it restarts itself and auto logs back in. That actually took about two minutes. Okay, so down here, you should see the updated information for your build. Now, I already had it, so that information didn't actually change, but anyway, you understand. Now, you'll notice that instead of your network cutting out every single day, you needing to power the extender off and then back on again, the problem will happen every couple of days, possibly. And if you just sit there and be patient for 30 seconds or a minute, it will start itself. It's not completely improved, but it's better. I myself won't be going back to this version of the firmware ever. Excellent. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe and share.